गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट्स प्लीज कम हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल रॉबिन एम आई ऑडिबल यस सर यस सर ऑडिबल विल स्टार्ट आवर टुडेस प्रोग्राम टुडेस प्रोग्राम इज बेस्ड ऑन इनोवेशन what is basically the innovation it is applying new concepts and ideas and develop right now so uh, let me formally welcome our expert for today's program and he is professor abhishek arya professor abhishek arya has done his thank you sir engineering. he has done his engineering in uh, civil and then afterwards he did mba in supply chain in management after that he did his mtech in civil engineering and right now he is pursuing phd so he has 3 years of industrial experience and 11 years of teaching experience now as our topic is about innovation innovation is the meaning of innovation is applying new concepts and ideas and develop something new which is for the benefit of the society so in that sense professor abhishek arya is going to present something new concept which is still new that is the palm island which which is already which has been made which is a man made thing which which was a new concept and still i think it is a new concept because nobody other than the dubai based uh, those uh, technicians technocrats nobody has done it still yet now let me formally welcome professor abhishek arya to deliver our to deliver the program and so now i formally welcome uh, uh good afternoon sir good afternoon am i audible sir am i audible sir yes sir yes sir you are audible so now i formally in, uh, yeah, welcome you, you and i request you to kindly start your lecture so that our students would get benefited thank you sir oh. sure sir thank you sir thank you so much sir first of all a lecture here uh, should i use the earphones or uh, am i audible already uh, the voice is now more clear i hope Is it more clear? 
हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल सर 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 तो वॉल्यूम इज वेरी लो सर एम आई ऑडिबल ना हो सर एम आई ऑडिबल ना हो सर यस सर यस सर ओके सर बट यू हैव टू कीप माइक इन फ्रंट ऑफ योर माउथ श्योर सर श्योर नॉट प्रॉब्लम सर बस आई एम जस्ट शेयरिंग माय स्क्रीन कैन स्टार्ट thank you sir i'm just sharing my screen Sir, is my presentation visible to everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, but I cannot see my presentation, sir. sir it is not showing on my screen actually how i can see myself but your your screen is visible to us are this ppt sir this creation of arm so the whole screen or only the ppt okay sir nice Okay, sir. That's nice. I'm just starting then. Sir, is it still visible my presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. Yes, sir. Okay. Or now, any folder is shown. Problem is that only that on my screen it is not being shown. I don't know where I should click so that I myself can see my presentation. Is there any place where I should click so that I can see my presentation myself? Robin. Robin sir Robin sir Just a minute sir Sure sure sir no problem हेलो हेलो सर प्रेस स्कीप जस्ट प्रेस स्कीप
Uh, did your screen is now visible to you? There's a flower which is shown on my screen. Just press escape. I'm pressing the escape, sir. Now is your screen is visible? No, sir. Let me share it back. Okay. I will stop sharing. Now I'm trying back. Just share the entire screen. Okay, sir. So now I have to share the screen. Uh, yeah now uh, now you uh, you now start uh, it's visible just click on the ppt and start sharing now just click click on the ppt yeah it's visible to us you can now make it full screen uh, click on uh, the slide show button on the top Yeah, now it's visible to everyone. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Penta, sir, now it's okay. Yes, it is visible to us. So, so you can continue now. Okay, sir. Uh, so, good afternoon, all the students. I am starting my presentation on the topic creation of the Palm Islands. Now, as I was told that I have to take a presentation on innovation. So, being a civil engineer. There are many, many wonders which have been created by humans in the last 10, 10 or 20 years. But uh, when I searched many of the such type of wonders, I came through this particular topic and this particular topic uh, actually uh, leaves me uh, so much that uh, because this man-made structure is such a beautiful structure and such a wonder in civil engineering that I thought that I should share this particular topic with all of you. So uh, it's me, Professor Abhishek Arya, who is uh, uh, delivering this particular lecture to all of you students. So let's talk about this particular thing. It's a beautiful thing, such a wonder, which is, uh, I, I don't think that it is possible in real life, but to, uh, the Dubai people, the engineers, they proved all the people wrong and they completed this particular, such a gigantic task, such a gigantic project, I should say. Uh, this is actually Palm Island. What actually is Palm Island? Palm Islands are basically the artificial archipelago in Dubai, UAE. What does it mean by artificial archipelago? That means that there are some uh, islands which have been created by humans. There are many islands which have been created by God, but there were some islands because of the scarcity of the land and because of many other things. So humans have also started uh, creating some islands. And because Dubai is having a problem that uh, the fuel which is they are having that will uh, that will vanish in the coming time. So they are now focusing on the tourism actually. And for that they are uh, spending lakhs and lakhs of money. So they uh, thought about this particular project. So Palm Island is basically not a single uh, particular project. There were three projects initially with the name of Palm Zumera, Palm Zabel Ali and Palm Diera. They were used projects and the, the picture which you just saw 
was actually a palm jumeirah why i took particular picture that will i explain in a few seconds but first of all let me talk about uh, each of these individually so first is palm jumeirah so palm jumeirah's creation started in june 2001 so they thought about this particular project that yes this is a big project and we should do it so what why 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 this uh, project was taken i just told you so let's uh, concentrate on the tourism and for that tourism they thought that this is something which we can do and uh, the people of dubai the sheikhs of dubai they always think out of the box and with that they thought about this particular project so in june 2001 this was started it is actually having uh, uh, so there is some disturbance uh, some disturbance going on Uh, I I think out. that the mic should be. Hello. Hello. Uh, there is a huge disturbance going on, sir. I think the mic should be mute of some some person. Hello. Hello. Uh, there is a huge disturbance going on, sir. okay that's nice uh this particular creation which is started in june 2001 it a consist of a tree trunk and with a crown with 16 fronts as uh, we saw that picture and i will show that picture again so uh there was a 11 km long breakwater and uh, then the island size is 5 km by 5 km which is basically equal to equivalent to somewhere 800 football pitches and the island is created using 94 million cubic meters of sand okay and about 7 millions of tons of rocks so uh, let's go back to that particular uh, figure and let me show you uh, see this is uh, this is that palm jumeirah and you can quite easily see that uh, uh, this is a, a trunk and there are 16 fronts which are going on and if you see the outer circle that outer circle is basically known as breakwater so this is a technical term in civil engineering in which breakwater means this is something which is stopping the water okay and that was the basically the tedious task in this particular project okay now let's come back to the uh, next detail now let's talk about the palm jabal ali so this is palm jabal ali and you can see that uh, this size was mu much more than palm jumeirah and it was having moat fronts and more typical design and there were some letters which were written in urdu as well so what are the technical details of uh, this palm jabal ali palm jabal ali was actually proposed as 1.5 times the size of palm jumeirah okay and its creation also started in october 2002 and their breakwater work was actually completed in december 2006 but the project was uh, on hold because of the financial crisis which everybody knows which came in 2008 2009 so they stopped this work the third one was palm tierra the palm tierra was a huge one it has lots and lots of fronts you can quite easily see in this particular figure in which there were many many fronts and it was of a huge size uh, this project was announced in 2004 and its original design was Called for a 14 by 8.5 kilometers island and 41 fronts it had. Okay, its redesign was done in mid 2007, and then it was uh, reduced to 12.5 by 7.5 kilometer island, and then 18 fronts was reduced. Uh, till October 2007, only 20% of land reclamation was achieved, but then it was also went to a hold because of the financial crisis. so basically what we know about palm island is uh, palm jumeirah actually because palm jumeirah is the only project which completed uh, in this particular uh, whole palm island thing so we are basically talking about the palm jumeirah today because uh, the other two unfortunately because of the financial things and every all other circumstances unfortunately they were on hold and they are still on the hold they are still not uh, going on only uh, palm jabal ali is uh, uh, land reclamation or uh, land reclamation was done but uh, palm dera is still having uh, is of nowhere actually to be very honest so now i will 
in detail talk about how this uh, whole project was constructed and what are the technical terms which actually came into uh, these uh, uh, project so there were three things which actually happened the first one is land reclamation the second one was its monitoring by the dgps which is known as differential global positioning system gps we all know about because nowadays in our mobile and everywhere you we know about gps what actually gps is all about but uh, uh, down the line 20 years ago they 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 monitored this whole project uh, with gl uh, global positioning system which is gps and then came a big challenge of uh, the compaction which i will take on the later stage uh, so that they completed uh, uh, this particular compaction work by vibro compaction so let's first talk about land reclamation what actually land reclamation is all about what actually happens that we we see that uh, the oceans are having uh, a lot of water so what happens that if we artificially pour some sand on uh, uh, water and what happens that initially the sand will be washed away by the water but there will come a stage when you if you keep pouring the sand again and again and again and again then what will happen that uh, at the end of the day there will be sand on the water and then more sand if you, it will be poured then the water will be uh, on the second stage and the sand will be there all about so in that particular case what happens will that that after a certain uh, period of time there will only be sand rather than the water it it can be seen by us in our daily life also if we, if some rain comes and uh, our streets are uh, having water and if you pour sand on the water if uh, there is a little water and if you pour sand on it then after a certain period of time and after a certain quantity of sand what will happen that the whole water will be covered by sand and if you pour more sand there then what will happen that only sand will be uh, seen so that is basically known as land reclamation because if the if you take the word itself reclaim means you claim something back so we, we we think that it is was land originally so now if the water is there so we are reclaiming the uh, land to ourselves okay so what were the challenges they were having there were huge challenges uh, which uh, were there in uh, the dubai thing the first was of dubai storm so what was the problem with dubai storm luckily what they studied all about was that that uh, storm was not that great I, I, it was not the case that there was the storms were like of a huge quantity or use intensity i should say but actually what happens was that uh, heavy so reclamation of uh, uh, the land was not that easy so first let me talk about uh, the reclamation then i will take about these challenges one by one let uh, okay so what happened that this particular breakwater which we were talking about the which was the original thing which is started and which was the, the basically land reclamation that whole breakwater was about 11 km long so 11 km is a is a big distance and uh, 220 meter was the width of that particular cross section so you can quite easily see that this is something a huge thing and reclaiming such a such a lengthy uh, uh, land is not an easy task so uh, one more thing was that uh, this actually used to stand over 13 feet above low tide sea level and sits in uh, sits in 34 feet of water at the deepest point so if you talk about the deepest point of the sea it was 30 feet of water at the deepest point so it was required that the crest of the breakwater there should be at least three to four meter above the mean sea level uh, the slope which they actually decided was uh, one in two okay so that means it was not a huge slope but uh, there was a slope which was required so it was that so the composition of breakwater they wanted now comes the great thing you talk about the dubai people and they are out of their mind and out of their box out of the mind and out of the box they used to think so actually what happened that they decided that they will not go for the concrete and uh, steel so that was something which was used because it cannot happen such a big project such a size of the project and they were talking about uh, that don't use the concrete so it is something great they wanted it to be very natural so they wanted that the only rock and sand should be used for the whole project at least for the, uh, the, the construction of the basic project and after then the hotels and the residential things they were constructed that was a different thing but originally they thought about uh, 
that they they don't uh, don't use any concrete or uh, steel or something they just use the rocks and sand so this was something very out of the box so what actually happened that if you go and see the composition of the black water the black water composition consisted of coarse sand and uh, uh, tons and tons of uh, uh, pebbles i should say or the rock in a normal sense which we used to say okay so this uh, uh, stone problem was there so now first of all the problem was that the such a huge quantity of stone was required such a huge quantity of sand was required and the problem was that if the transportation in itself makes uh, the project uh, very costly so uh, they thought about it and luckily in uh, dubai itself uh, in the outskirts of the dubai they found such type of uh, rocks and they used those rocks luckily dubai was never an earthquake zone so the best thing about dubai was that it was not having uh, high intensity earthquakes so uh, they used these rocks so they started using these rocks and started pouring those rocks now pouring those rocks in uh, um, in sea now it is something if you, when in our childhood we heard about a story of thirsty crow i hope we all have heard about that particular story in which there there used to be a crow and he is very thirsty and what happens that he he sees a, a pitcher of water and what happens is that the water is on very on the low level so he used to put pebbles in the water so, uh, so that the water comes up and he drinks the water so the same thing was applied at that particular place they used to pour a big uh, sand size of rocks to the water initially and that those rocks are uh, being put on a right place because see the hap it happens that because if you see the this particular pictures they are see they are taken from a huge height but when you start doing the work when you are constructing those things it is not that easy to monitor the things and because you are on the ground also so you cannot uh, just by your own eye visibility you cannot say that uh, the uh, rocks are uh, being placed on the right place so they have to monitor through their satellite as well and everything which i will take on the later stage so they started pouring the stones there now what happened that the stones were of a huge size then after a certain period of time what happened was that initially uh, the rocks were put there and then after a certain period of time they uh, the rocks started coming on the upper side and then they they, they thought about to pour this uh, uh, sand on that also okay so uh, actually the study they uh, were uh, they had was about the arabian gulf as i have uh, shown there the strength of the dubai storm so what happened was that arabian gulf is uh, it was uh, told to be the perfect place for such construction because the depth of the arabian gulf is about 30 meters only and the width is about 160 meter which is basically too short and shallow for the creation of immensely destructive waves so uh, because of that the shallowness of that particular gulf uh, the destructive waves are not there so that was the positive thing for this particular project so the gulf climate is more on the mild side but uh, uh, there is a season which is uh, in their technical language it is known as shamal season which is uh, that particular season which comes in somewhere like november to april in which uh, they uh, they they see the storms in the uh, gulf area okay so what actually happened was that those storms which uh, if you go to the technicality of those storms they were about like 55 60 km per hour speed and so it was very difficult at that moment of time so they have to think about or they have to schedule their project in such a way that those particular months are avoided uh, when they were uh, doing the breakwater work so and uh, even the waves which were ranging uh, they, they 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 can be like 1 meter 2 meter high okay for the strong uh, such a strong wind so it is very difficult for them so the scientists actually calculated that uh, for uh, this breakwater thing what are the basic uh, or what are the right times for uh, the pouring of rocks so they started pouring the rocks uh, on a uh, water so the best thing was that uh, the height of waves and tidal surges were not that uh, difficult for them and yes global warming was always a challenge for every type of such type of project okay so these were the challenges which they were facing and what happened was that 
let's come to the tech more technicalities of uh, this particular uh, project so uh, there were belgian and dutch raising and marine contractor uh, they were jendinel and van ord they were basically hired for the purpose because uh, uh, the land reclamation work they are uh, considered to be one of the best in the world okay so as i told you that breakwater was somewhere like 11 or 11.5 km long with a 200 meter width and it was required that that breakwater should be at like 3 meter above the waves of the main sea level so they uh, think about it they uh, they worked on that and uh, they stand over about 13 feet above low tide sea level and sitting on the 34 feet of water as i told you earlier so the, uh, the breakwater started they were working on the breakwater now you if you can see on the screen this is uh, these are the rocks which basically which were put on the seabed now this is the slope which you can see so it was not that easy obviously but they kept on doing that for that there were huge amount of uh, uh, machinery which was required like uh, there were nine barges 15 duck boats dredgers heavy land mach uh, based machines floating cranes were required now what was the problem the problem or the challenge at that time was one more thing now that as i told you about that uh, rock thing okay so they 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 took uh, the rocks uh, from the outskirts of dubai so the transportation cost was less and the timing was also short but what happened that after a certain period of time when the uh, when uh, when the water was on the downside and when the rocks started coming up so what happened that now they need to pour a sand on that now this uh, thing which you are seeing on your screen this is known as uh, there is a technical term for, for this now when what happens that if you have the uh, lot of rocks now which are coming on the upper side of the water and it's a, uh, it's like on the the thirsty grow story type thing that now the water is on a very uh, a superficial stage now so now the sand is being poured so you can see that such type of big uh, boats were there and through that they were used to pour the sand okay so this particular process in technical language is known as renboing so you can see one more uh, photo of this with a different angle so you see this now there is a lot of land which has already been reclaimed and they are trying to reclaim more land so now what happens that on the uh, the lower side of the water there are big rocks which you saw just in the uh, two screen uh, two slides earlier now this particular sand is being poured there so they kept on uh, pouring this particular sand on the water so what happens that they started the the water used to start going down and then at there was a time when the whole land was basically reclaimed so now the pro, the one more problem which came the problem was that how to get that uh, so much sand to be poured on the water because now the rocks have been uh, put on the bed side so now they need more sand to be poured on the top surface so basically what happened was that they uh, started searching for that now the rock uh, the sand which uh, they need to pour because the problem was that they cannot use any type of sand because it is not just the reclamation but it is about that after a certain period of time and the whole uh, work will be completed about of reclaiming the thing then the construction will start so there were uh, residential houses which were proposed there were uh, five, seven star nine star hotels which were proposed there were best of the possible things which were proposed so now the problem was that they cannot use any type of sand because if you use any type of sand what will happen that after a certain period of time you will face the problems of creating or constructing things on that particular sand so they have to use a particular sand so what happened that they started searching for that particular sand the lucky thing about for them was that the uh, ocean or this particular sea which you are seeing uh, they found that particular uh, type of sand only uh, 100 or 150 meters under the water Uh, i should say and in the deepness of the boats which used to go into the sea they uh, used to uh, put the machinery under the sea and they used to put uh, take the sand from the base of the uh, gulf and uh, uh, just drain the water away and that uh, they bring the sand and this such type of 
rainbowing which is as i told you this is the technical term for this particular process the rainbowing was done okay so they kept on rainbowing this thing and the, uh, the whole land was reclaimed now the problem was that if you are reclaiming the land that is very good thing but the problem with this particular project was that the shape of the project you saw that there, uh, that was uh, uh, taken as a palm tree type of thing so there is a trunk there and there are different fronds which are there and they are curvy things so it becomes almost impossible for them to uh, to create such things so that was the biggest challenge so now they have to monitor this particular thing that how they will ensure that the shape which they actually wanted is being uh, constructed rightly so luckily uh, because the, this uh, whole uh, talk, things which i am talking about is somewhere like 2003 2004 so dubai is was having one uh, satellite of their own because of the richness of those people so they use that particular satellite and through which the differential global positioning system which is known as dgps that was being uh, uh, employed there so uh, now coming to the technical thing the sand uh, placement was guided by dgps allowing for a an error of less than 0.39 of an inch so just think about it and if we talk about the indian metric system we used to uh, go for meters and centimeters so an inch is somewhere like 2.54 uh, cm okay so just think about it that just 0.39 of an inch was the allowable error for uh, uh, this particular project so you can think about it the best what best they were being used okay so there were five men uh, who were employed to walk around the whole area and they used to carry the gadgets which i, I will show you on the next uh, slide okay these uh, signals the, they used to send the signals to the satellite the satellite the dubai's uh, sheikhs were prince or i should say they were having their own satellite system so the signals were being processed after then the uh, the as the signals were processed they used to know that whether they are going on the right side for the rainbowing thing or not so you can see on this particular slide you see the people this is the real picture from uh, palm island which was taken when the whole work was going on so uh, these uh, five men they used to walk around the whole area and they used to uh take uh, coordinates there and they used to take uh, send the signals to the satellite system so that uh, uh, the whole uh, work which is being going on it should be, it can be seen whether they are going on the right track or whether they are going on the wrong track where the places where more sand need to be poured where the places where the sand should not be poured more so this whole was uh, taken care by this whole uh, dgps system okay now came the most important thing vibro compaction now what was the problem the problem was that end of the day they used uh, sand only okay so the first problem was that the sand was rainbowed uh, i just uh, show you the thing that what is the rainbowing rainbowing means that just pouring the sand in a uh, in a by just by the pump but with the high pressure so that the water can be uh, replaced by the sand and the land can be reclaimed so what I actually happened that uh, the sand was rainbowed first of all and basically it was sand so it it has to be loose it has to be uncompacted so now the problem was that uh, such type see the such type of project which happens that uh, there is a technical term which is a self compaction what happens that when uh, even in our houses as well when we construct a house like of a one floor or two floor what happens actually that there is a, a lot of weight which goes on the Uh, uh soil of the uh, which soil under the houses so what actually happens that there is a self compaction thing because what happens that after one year two year five year 10 years down the line the the house itself the soil the house it 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 gets settled but the settlement is in a, uh, in millimeter so you cannot quite easily figure it out but what happens that there is a self compaction thing and after then a certain period of time when the load is being balanced by that particular soil so what happens that the uh, structure actually attains the equilibrium so natural compaction can be a possibility but the problem was that they were having a schedule they thought about this particular project to be completed in a particular tight schedule or strict time schedule 
so they didn't have that option that they to wait for that uh, such type of natural compaction or wait for such type of thing now second comes that uh, the compaction is a a uh, process in which there are different things like first we used to see that road roller which is a very common thing which you always see since our childhood that the when the road is constructed there are road rollers which are used for the compaction and this is the one of the most common and more, most effective way but in such type of structure it was also unfortunately not a way because if you uh, want to compact a sand layer okay so if you talk about road roller road roller road roller is cannot be an option if the road uh, the soil layer is 12 meter or more than uh, 12 meter deep and uh, the this particular project was having a very deep uh, soil so what can be the process so they thought about one more out of the box way and there was one more process which was known as vibro compaction now you can see this is known as vibro compaction i have a, a animated as well as real video for uh, this particular process because this is very important process in geotechnical engineering so what actually happened that there were big shafts which were there these shafts were actually employed there were huge uh, uh, holes which were dig and this shaft was uh, inserted into the sand so what happened that these shaft used to give a heavy vibration to the sand and after that vibration the sand used to come together and it it, it gets a comp it gets compacted now what happens is that you need more soil because as the soil will be compacted the uh, the level will go down so they used to pour more sand to uh, this uh, these particular holes so in such a way they completed this compaction thing there were 2000 holes you just imagine this thing there were 2000 holes which were drilled into the ground and uh, when the uh, when the vibrations was given then the additional sand was uh, dumped into the uh, uh, filling the remaining uh, space but even the 2000 holes that much of machinery they were having still they took about 8 months 8 months to stabilize all the fronts uh, i have a, a video for you people so you can see quite easily uh let me show this from the folder itself let me slow it down now see this in this video you can see that such type of vibration first of all the holes were dig and uh, the the holes were drilled into the uh, fronts there were i as i show you that there were 2000 holes which were drilled into the uh, sand now what happens that such type of big shafts which were actually put into the such type of holes and it used to give vibration now what happens that when you vibrate this particular thing the sand will come near to each other so obviously what will happen that there will be compaction and when the compaction will be there then what will happen that the uh, sand will go down the level will go down so you need more additional sand to be poured and those will be uh, were poured by the jcb so you just see this the shaft is giving a uh, huge vibration and with the vibration the sand is being compacted and the additional sand which was required is being continuously poured by the machines so you can see this uh, was one of the best particular way and one of the most advanced way of uh, compacting a soil so this was something which was never used earlier uh, now i show you the real uh, video of pamsumera where the vibro compaction is being done and you will see the size you you just see the size of the shaft these are the real shaft these were the real holes which were drilled there and this was the real shaft and now you, you will see there there will be a a cart which will come so you will see the size of these shaft
see the way they are vibrating so it, it is something huge and now you just see see there's a person which is coming there so you can see the see the, the length the height of the shaft which is being used so what is the mega structure we were having now you see that the, the this cart is coming and it is pouring the additional sand which is required to be put into the holes because as you keep uh, vibrating the holes then what will happen the sand is coming to near to each other so this is basically known as vibro compaction let, let me come back to my presentation now so uh, now you've got this particular thing so uh, uh, let me give you uh, the the whole idea again so what actually happened was that this particular project was having different stages the first one was the land reclamation so what was basically land reclamation in which basically they reclaimed the land okay and this process itself was used and the most important thing was that the innovation was there because so far even after these particular uh, projects the world has seen concrete steel to be used in such type of projects even like in Burj Khalifa as well. But this particular project was having a, such a special thing because in this, they only use the natural natural material, which was rock and sand. Okay, so just putting sand, just putting a huge amount of rock, but still stabilizing the whole island, firstly uh, reclaiming the land and then constructing a number of uh, houses and number of buildings there so this was something out of the box so far. It is still one of the best possible man-made structure on uh, the water. And they have shown the world that even the water can be used. If, uh, if uh, uh, there will come a time when the population will rise and if you need more place to uh, live on, so the water can be reclaimed and the land can be created by such type of uh, uh, processes. Then they monitor this whole project by the global positioning system. And in the end, we saw that the most important thing was vibro compression. It was an easy thing. It was something very special which happened because till then the main processes were like road roller or even dynamic compaction was being used. But vibro compaction was not something very common in the, those times. But they showed the world that uh, even the sand can be compacted in such a way that such type of used buildings can be constructed on such type of uh, material. So I am having uh, some uh, pictures of this uh, Palm Jumeirah which was constructed and there were many people who are living there, uh, many celebrities who are having their uh, villas there. So I am just having a, uh, just showing you people a very quick tour of Palm Jumeirah. So this was, and this is I should say Palm Jumeirah which has been created at the end. There are different fronts you can say they were given name and on alphabetical way from A, B, C, D till P, okay. And if, if you can see uh, at the top, this is the Hotel Atlantis. This is, I think, uh, seven star hotel. It is a huge, huge structure. Uh, it will be shown in the later side, uh, slides as well. Now, uh, there were one more thing which I need to uh, uh, tell you about this. Now, when you talk about uh, such projects, you, you know this uh, nowadays, even nowadays, and even 20 years uh, earlier, the environmental thing comes comes into action. What actually I mean about uh, is by the marine life, because when you will start constructing things on the ocean, on the Gulf, what will happen that the environment environment people will come into the action and they will talk about the safety of the marine life, the existence of the marine life. So the problem is that the, if you see that this particular outer uh, circle which you are being uh, you are seeing, this is actually the breakwater which I told you about. So the problem was, this was the earlier design actually. So the problem was that the water was inside this particular uh, circle, you can see. So the real water, which is the fresh water, which is actually completely outside this particular breakwater. And this breakwater is actually saving uh, the inside fronts to the uh, waves of the water or through the storms or from the storms of the water. So the problem was that the marine life which was there because these whole houses the fronts you are seeing they're a kind of beaches only so the water is there uh, on the outer side of those all fronts so the problem was that marine life was being disturbed so they saw that the water basically 
was having a problem uh, of not getting fresh because obviously it will get fresh by own itself because on the load side you can see that these all water can come out and come, uh, go in but they saw that 13 days were actually a time period for a uh, water to be circulated so this was a problem so if you see on the right and left hand side there's a cut there although uh, this was the original drawing in which the cut was not that uh, through but now this cut has been through so this was a cut which was given so that the fresh water can come into the uh, in, uh, the, the fronts which are there these are the houses which are actually already constructed on these fronts so you can see the size you can see the number of houses and just imagine this thing the all these houses are constructed on the land which is basically reclaimed only by using rocks and sands so just think about the innovation just think about the impossible task which uh, which man has made it possible okay see this this is the real picture of uh, palm zumira in which there are huge amount of fronts are there there are many buildings you can see uh, which are being constructed there are houses which are already constructed people started living there although there are challenges i i accept that if you if you search about palm island if you search about palm zumira uh, on the google you will find that there are many negatives about this particular project as well uh, because of the Dubai's condition, because of the environmental issues, because of the uh, summer uh, seasons of uh, Dubai, which is very, very difficult for them, which is very impossible thing, although. But yes, these all uh, uh, houses, these all villas are basically equipped with all the air conditioning system and everything. So obviously the cost is involved, but you, you can you can think about that. The people who are living on this type of islands, they cannot be normal people. So... Uh, now see, see this is this is also a real picture in which you can see that there are many buildings which are already constructed there are roads which are constructed on these uh, trunks and people moving around and there are best possible villas best possible bungalows are being constructed these are the buildings which are being constructed this is a picture of uh, i think 2006 uh, see this multi story buildings are being constructed and just imagine these all buildings are being constructed on the land which is being reclaimed so these this is the breakwater you can see the outer side these are the this is the known as the breakwater there are the fronts this breakwater is connected by uh, you can see there's a, there's some land which is there on the top which is uh, connecting these uh, this breakwater to the front there are uh, underwater tunnels as well which are connecting this these are the proposed villas, which are you can see. So such a beautiful uh, uh, villas they are having, and this is a real picture. This is not a proposed uh, uh, drawing. This is a real picture. The already constructed houses are there. Now this is the hotel I was talking about. This is the Atlantis Hotel, which you saw on that particular uh, the first uh, picture. This is I think seven star or nine star hotel. So you just see the size of the hotel, and uh, I think one of the movie of uh, Shah Rukh Khan, uh, Shah Rukh Khan and Abhishek Bachchan, and they were there. I think that movie was uh, being shot in this particular hotel only. Okay. So this is a beautiful, beautiful place. These are the uh, uh, villas which are there in which people are living. So this is from my side. Thank you so much to all of you, um, and I, I hope I was able to uh, share with you the innovation which has been done by um, man in uh, the wake this farm island is vehicle man made it possible uh, so this is uh, from my side if there are any questions on uh, this particular topic we to um, answer uh, hello uh, Neeraj Pandita sir
हेलो हेलो नीरज सर यार इंजीनियर के आर शर्मा सर और सीनियर फैकल्टी मेंबर टू प्रेजेंट वोट ऑफ थैंक्स शर्मा सर हेलो गुड आफ्टरनून एम आई ऑडिबल यस सर यस सर यू आर ऑडिबल गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरीबॉडी एंड थैंक्स टू मिस्टर अभिषेक ही ही हैज एक्सप्लेन वेरी नाइसली एंड वेरी बट से डेडिकेशन द प्रोसेस हाउ द फॉर्म आइसलैंड हैज कम अप आई एम रियली वेरी थैंकफुल टू हिम and we are very proud of the indian our engineers who have are studying these such type of innovations and we, our students will be able to get guidance and they will be very and fruitful for them at such type of a lecture thank you very much thank you ha neeraj thank you thank you sir uh, oh. thank you uh, professor abhishek arya for sparing time uh, and uh, giving us giving us a wonderful lecture on this new top quick especially you, on innovation thank you. thank you sir yeah okay sir The program is over now, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, sir.